الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي دروس شيخ الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home like how suraqa bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala an at that time he was not a muslim but alhamdulillah later on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him hidayat he had the desire to capture hazrat nabi kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with siddiq akbar radiyallahu ta'ala an so that he could benefit with the reward of 100 camels the prize that was put for capturing hazrat nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam likewise just after that event there was another man whose name was <coughs> burayda aslam these are important names to remember burayda Aslami. Burayda Aslami came with a team of 70 men to capture Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here Suraka bin Malik made Tawbah of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Baddu'a if you remember that the entire horse was dragged into the ground and Hazrat alayhi salatu wa sallam again made dua for him. and he was free to go and he promised huzur alayhi salam that if anyone is following you i will say to them that i have checked that this entire route and no one is here no one to be found from the other side a team of 70 men with the leadership of burayda bin aslami this man was a powerful man he came with 70 men and all had the desire again to capture huzur alayhi salatu was salam preferably both of them to be alive and to earn the reward of 100 camels when he came close to huzur alayhi salatu was salam in this case ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the first one to notice him in the case of suraqa bin malik siddiq akbar radiyallahu ta'ala noticed him from the back first and he said Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana don't fear Allah is with us when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Burayda Aslami coming Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Siddiq Akbar and Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and this was the beauty of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq he knew exactly what to do one ishara of huzur alayhi salatu was salam when to speak and when to stay quiet and this is a great art where people go wrong is that we open up our mouths at the wrong time when we are to stay quiet sometimes we open up the mouth and when we are to speak out and we stay quiet and so one person says mali sahab allahu akbar mali sahab not being any kira he is not saying alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allahumma inni it is better to stay quiet Now in your namaz is not made to stay quiet. Kirahat is important, wajib. Right? So you might as well open your mouth here and recite the, recite the Quran. But generally, man samat al-najah. The person who stays quiet, Allah has given him salvation. And there are a lot of the akabirin. Some of the akabirin were such that you'd hardly hear them speak. Men of few words, very few. is one great bulug someone said to him hazrat why don't you give nasihat 
it will benefit the people others looked at them and said that if if i am quiet and if that does not benefit people how will people benefit from me when i speak even when i am quiet my tawajju is with them and tawajju is also something tawajju is to look at someone with a spiritual eye and this was given to hazrat e nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam anbiya alaihi wassalatu wassalam sahaba e kiram ajma'in that eye was very very powerful one is nazar the evil eye that is also one eye and the other eye is the spiritual eye which can transform a person change him completely and the other one is the evil eye jisko hum kehte hain nazar lag gayi ek wo nazar hai an nazru haqqun aur ek kisi ne ek wali ki nazar and that changes a person and this was exactly what happened in the case of burayda bin aslami when ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw him coming ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him man anta who are you and the personality the presentation of huzur alayhi salatu was salam was such that any question put forward that person had no choice but to answer the the nur that was with huzur alayhi salatu was salam and he says ana burayda but i am burayda now in the arabic language burayda means something that is cold cool breeze at times it's even used for water cold water and when he said burayda ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at hazrat abu bakr siddiq and said well here is burayda what can how can burayda harm us water is something that benefits the human being so burayda is not here to harm us burayda is just stunned by what huzur alaihi salatu wasallam is said and just looking at the people around him this was the akhlaq of huzur alaihi salatu wasallam breaking everything breaking everything such beautiful teachings of ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you are angry ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us advice make wudu you go to a surgeon or a doctor or a professional person and say to him what do i do if i am angry and they'll prescribe you some tablets they'll give you some tablets or fir lene ke dene Uh, you become so weak that anger in itself is eliminated from you know anger at times is good so when you doing jihad and say no ji kuch nahi uh, that's wrong allah akbar so aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam would even get angry when the laws of allah were being violated annahu munziru jaish in the in the hadith it comes that sometimes when aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave khutbah there was a, a vein that was popping out and that was the anger of huzur alayhi salatu wassalam and the companions would recognize that anger from the face ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam said bhai wuzu kar lo if you are standing sit down subhanallah change your posture go away calm yourself such beautiful teaching ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam said lays as shadid bi sur'a to be strong to be physical to be strong physically that does not mean that you have the power to overpower your opponent that's not to be strong that is not the real meaning of someone who's very powerful physically ab sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that that person is strong yamliku nafsahu inda al ghazab the person who can who has learned to control his anger at that precise moment when anger comes to him he is a mighty person he is a powerful person malana bahauddin sahab once the imam of president saddam hussein mosque <laughs> the birmingham people are powerful people and they still have a mosque in aston named president saddam hussein mosque and these people are so tolerant دیکھنے جائے نا ان کی خوبی ہے اللہ سبحان و تعالی گیو دیم ایمان یو یو کان امیجن دس ان ا مسلم کنٹری کہ جس کے ساتھ دشمنی ہو اور پھر اسی کے نام پر مسجد ہو یو کان ہیو دیٹ 
In fact, in Saudi Arabia, what happens is that the beautiful names of Siddiq Akbar, once upon a time, the doors were beautifully named Bab Abu Bakr Siddiq, Bab Umar Farooq, Bab Osman, and Bab Ali, named after Khulafai Rashidin. And there are four main uh, entries to Haram and Sharif. Wouldn't it be so beautiful to, to name the doors after these great Khulafai Rashidin? But no, uh, they are named after what? Huh? The Khuddams. And, and you'll hardly find it's written in a small handwriting by T C D Bab Abu Bakr Siddiq Swan. And when you go to the main gates, oh colourful. Subhanallah, what is taqwa? What is ikhlas? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. And this the British people they have that MashaAllah, uh, that, that jazba, they are tolerant. They are tolerant. And this is the freedom that you see. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's also bad. It works both ways. So Mawana Bahauddin Sam was once an Imam of uh, President Saddam Hussein Mosque. And uh, the inauguration of that mosque was in the, I think it was in the uh, 80s. 89 or something like that Allahu alam. but I remember that I was there at that time and Mawana Ghulam Habib Sahib was invited for the inauguration Mawana Ghulam Habib Sahib was a great sheikh he has passed away Mawana Bahauddin Sahib once said to me that Mawana Yusuf Mutala Sahib was with him in Bari Darlun Bari is in Holcomb and then there is again in the outskirts there is another small city Bari and there's a town there, students often go there and shop in that area. Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Sahib was with Mawlana Bahauddin Sahib. Now, at that time, in, in Bari, there were very few Muslims. Uh, now, Alhamdulillah, there is a big Pakistani population in Bari. Mawlana Yusuf Sahib was there with Mawlana Bahauddin Sahib. And he says that there, there was a group of white people there. And when they saw her, Mawana Isu Mutala Sahib, they were swearing at him and, you know, all sorts of things. Swearing at him, pointing fingers at him and, you know, whatever they say. They say Paki and we say Napaki. <laughs> Everything was going on there. Mawana Isu Sahib was not disturbed at all. Mawana Bahadim Sahib was young and hot-tempered. And he's, he was fuming. And he's saying, you know, what can I do? <laughs> and the jazba is there. Mawana Isu Sahib. Mawana Yusuf Sahib looked at Mawana Bahadim Sahib and said, To make a parishan, what is the problem with you? And Hazrat they are. This is the difference between Muslims and Kuffar. This is the difference between Muslims and Kuffar. Nothing. Kuch bhi nahi And only then you become a Sheikh. Only then you become a peer, a peer to such a level that underneath you there are great ulama who, who sit with great respect in front of you. And, and this is the barkat, the silsila, this unbroken chain coming from sahaba kiram ajma'in. So at the right time, anger is na'mat. At the right time, anger is na'mat. And this is the tuhfa, the gift that was given to Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala so Bureda was there and, and these people knew the Arabic language they were masters in the Arabic language he came with this jasba that's it 70 men Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is here Huzur alayhi salatu was salam is here and finished that's it we've captured them 100 camels for us Nab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now is explaining to him what Bureda means a lot of Muslims have names and when you ask them, do you know what Imran means? And you say, oh no, this, that. See? Do you know what Amr means? Do you know what Khalid means? Do you know what Muhammad means? Huh? Subhanallah. As sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is explaining to him. Now, just by talking to Huzur alayhi salatu wa salam, that enmity slowly, slowly is dissolving. 
And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he says, you are here to capture me. How much for what? Hundred camels. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, which tribe are you connected to? Tumara khandan kaun sa hai? And he says, I am from Min Bani Aslam. I am from the tribe of Aslam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. He said, Abu Bakr, look, he is from Aslam. And Aslam is the word that comes out from Islam. And Islam means to, to be subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to surrender. And Salama also means peace. That is why we say, Assalamu alaykum. Bay tumare upar salamati ho. This is the best dua a Muslim can give to his brother. There is no other dua that can be compared when you say Assalamu alaykum. And Assalam is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith it comes that when one Muslim brother does a favor to his Muslim brother and in return that Muslim brother says to him Jazakallahu khair. Jazakallahu khair. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith that there is no dua better than Jazakallah given to his brother. The best dua, Andana Kare, what does it mean? May Allah bless you. May Allah give you everything that is beneficial for you. May Allah give you in this dunya and give you in the hereafter. This is the meaning of Jazakallah Khair. So Ab Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. He said, Abu Bakr, he is Bureda and he is Aslam and he is here to capture us. The two names are contradicting the actions. He is not here to capture us. What can Bureda do to us? What can water? How can water harm us? And how can Islam harm us? How can peace harm us? He is coming here with peace. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking at him and saying to him, He is coming here with salamati, with peace. And that eye to eye connection, everything is being done there. Eat nigah bas kafi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said to him, Kharaja sahmuk. Kharaja sahmuk. That your portion of Islam has been given to you, Ya Bureda. You are from the tribe of Aslam. When Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said him, Kharaja sahmuk. Your portion of Islam has been given to you. Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed quiet. And he said to Huzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, Man anta? Then who are you? Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ana Muhammad bin Abdullah. I am Muhammad the son of Abdullah. Rasulullah. I am the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying that, he looked at Huzur alayhi salatu wa salam and he says, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness, I testify that there is no God but Allah and that you are the messenger and the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he did bay'ah to Huzur alayhi salatu wa salam. A kismat jaya gayi di waha suraqa bin malik ko iman us waqt nahi mila. He was not blessed with iman, but later on he was blessed with iman. And here, Bureda bin Aslami, instantly on the spot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him hidayat. And when your leader is good, generally the public is also good. But if your leader is no good, then generally the effects are also on the general public. That is why Hamare Hazrat Mahaghulam Habib Sahib would say, if you want to see how clean uh, that person is, the family members are in the house, then you should go and see the kitchen. You should go and see the kitchen. If the kitchen is spotless, very clean, then Alhamdulillah the family members in the house are generally clean. But if the kitchen is not clean, as it used to say, these are the nukat, then generally the people are not clean. SubhanAllah. The women may be listening and they can start <laughs> cleaning <laughs> in the heaven. Subhanallah. Up to Fuzul Khanchi ki bimari lagi hai na. We have in South Africa, what used to happen? Now, when the Muslims went to Africa, they, Subhanallah, absolutely took advantage of the economy of Africa. Didn't leave a single penny for the local Africans there. Yeah, in Malawi, 
the Muslims are enjoying the barbecue chickens and the local Africans haven't got any food. Inna lillahi wa inna ilihi rasha. Really. And there are tycoons, rich. And the youth, they only talk in millions. For them, what is nothing. They, they are only talking in millions. They talk in millions. And the local Africans, bichare. Here we could have learnt a lesson even from Mother Teresa. And some of these people. Some of the kuffar here, they've dedicated their life to animals. Looking after animals. Making sure that no harm comes to them. And a lot of Muslims, when they go to Africa, it was that sin. Deplete the economy, take everything out. Everything out. The kuffar, the locals haven't got anything to eat. And here the Muslims have flashy, flashy cars. Massive houses. And astaghfirullah. How nice it would be if we followed the sunnah of Huzur alayhi salatu wassalam. Ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his time in Madinatul Munawwara said to the companions that if a visitor came to see you and you were with your slave, the visitor would have difficulty in recognizing that who is the slave and who is the master. Who is the slave and who is the master. Give them the same food. Give them your clothes to wear. And Sahaba Kiram Ajma'in would do that. The, the, the slave would wear the same clothes as the master and, after, and in some cases they would share the same plate subhanallah and if we did that what the companions did majority of the people in Africa would have all been Muslims subhanallah and we wouldn't face this difficulty subhanallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Bureda and Bureda became a Muslim and all the 70 companions that were with him at that time all of them in one voice said to Bureda bin Aslami that if you have accepted Islam all of us have become Muslims also Dawud dekhe in the route to Madinatul Munawwara here now you have 71 people with Siddiqui Akbar that have all become Muslim and Bureda bin Aslami wanted to practice the, the tradition of the Arabs that whenever the Arabs went from one area to another area they had their the flag, their banners and he said to Huzur alayhi salatu was salam ya Rasulullah it would be nice if we would also have a sign, a banner some form of a flag so people could see us there were a lot of local people living in and around that area Ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam took his amama out the cloth and said to him here and he had his spear and tied the amama of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the spear and he was marching towards Madinatul Munawwara with 70 men 70 men amama is a great sunnah of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah when you wear an amama it's, it's the crown of a mu'min it's the crown of a mu'min it's the sunnah of the malaika also and there is this instant fear instilled in the hearts of the kuffar when you have a beard and when you wear a, an amama and when you stand in front of them there is this rob what is it? there is this awe in front of them so it's very important that subhanallah we follow the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then continued with this 70 people, Bureda, Aslami, with all the men that were with him. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went towards Madinatul Munawwara. Before reaching Madinatul Munawwara, there is one famous area known as Uba. Kya hai na? Uba. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first got to Quba before reaching Madinatul Munawwara. In Quba, a few Ansari families were living there on the outskirts of Madinatul Munawwara. Majority of them were the families of Hazrat Amr bin Auf radiallahu ta'ala an. And when Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got there, he stayed at the house of uh, Kulthum bin Hadaf radiallahu ta'ala an, who was at that time the leader of the tribes of that, that were in Kuba at that time. Kulthum bin Hadaf. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, stayed at the house of 
Khaysam bin Asaf radiyallahu ta'ala not to forget that Hazrat Ali was in Makkatul Mukarrama he gave the amanat to the people and he came after three days and he caught up in the journey and when Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Kuba that is the time he came also to Kuba and he stayed with Huzur alayhi salatu wa salam in the house of Kulthum bin Hadam radiyallahu ta'ala one of the most famous events that had taken place in Quba was the construction of masjid Quba and this is one of the most beautiful masjids you'll ever see alhamdulillah uh, the fazilat of it in the ahadith it comes that Aab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam usually on a Saturday would walk it from Medina, Medina to Munawwara from, from his house masjid Nabwi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Quba on a Saturday and would meet the people of Quba and would perform two rakats namaz day. there is a hadith which is mentioned recorded in Ibn Majah where Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that if anyone performs two rakats in masjid Quba he gets the reward of one umrah so that is why whenever one goes for ziyarat people always pray alhamdulillah two rakats in masjid Kuba with this intention that inshallah they will get the reward of one Umrah Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally laid the first stone in the foundation of that masjid the second stone was laid down by Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and the third stone was laid down by Sayyidina the Sayyidina Ali wrong Hazrat Umar Hazrat Umar Faru now Kuba is not far from Medina to Munawwara. As news broke out that Aaf sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already reached Kuba, majority of the, the famous companions, the Muhajireen, left Medina to Munawwara to come to Aaf sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to make ziyarat from, for him. A lot of the, the companions were there now in Kuba. Aaf sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally took part in the building of Masjid Kuba and this ayat karima was revealed La Masjidun Ussisa ala taqwa min awwal yawmin ahakku an takuma fi the masjid which the foundation of which is laid on piety on taqwa Aab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is more befitting for him to stand in that masjid an takuma fi yani to stand as in to perform salat in that masjid and Aab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, even praised the community of Quba due to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them that they were very very meticulous when it came to hygiene Allah says inna allaha yuhibbul mutatahireen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also likes those people who are, who are very very clean Aab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Amr ibn Auf radiyallahu ta'ala and said to him that Allah has praised you for your hygiene how is, how is your tahara? How do you clean yourself? And Amr bin Auf radiallahu ta'ala answered at that time, Ya Rasulullah, the locals here have these habits that we always use the special mudstone and then after using the mudstone we use water. We use tissue paper. We have it in the money if you took stones. <laughs> it would be difficult, isn't it? If you took stones. We use tissue paper. But in, in the time of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until today in some parts of India and Pakistan and even in Afghanistan, in, in that area, even in Saudi Arabia, some of the Bedouins still have that habit. Ham Urdu mein kehte dhela. Kya kehte? Dhela. They would use that all the time and then they would use water. Now that is the proper way to do istinja. They dry yourself first what is known as istibra what is known as istibra it is so important hygiene is so important even when we go to the masjid toilet we have to make sure that we take our socks out put the chumpal in the right area and when you urinate make sure that no, not a single drop is to touch your body sometimes it might not touch you on your feet but it could touch your ijaz so you have to be very very Careful, especially of the qatarat of Pesham. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers have heard this many, many times. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that 
the qatarat of peshab, urine drops are connected to the punishment of the grave. The punishment of the grave. So we have to be very careful. And the people of Quba, they were very, very clean. Muslims generally are very clean, alhamdulillah, as compared to any other people. That is why Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Juma ka ghusl kya hai? Sunnat. Even Eid and ghusl kya hai? Sunnat. Generally to make ghusl is also the sunnah. And as Muslims, we have to do wuzu all the time. Five times a day. And humare khane ki wajah se toh me wuzu ki ziyada zarurat hoti. So Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Quba for approximately three to four days and continued his journey towards Madinah al Munawwara. When he left Quba, a lot of the companions were with him. Absalallahu alayhi wa sallam passed from an area where Banu Salim, the tribe of Salim, were living, the children of Salim. Absalallahu alayhi wa sallam was on his camel, Qaswa. Absalallahu alayhi wa sallam greeted them all and was about to go straight to Madinatul Munawwara. The people of Banu Salim said to Huzur alayhi salam, Ya Rasulullah, it is not fair for us that you stayed over with the people of Quba and you have come to us and you will not spend time with us. So we request you that you should stay with us. Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then stayed with the people of Banu Salim before reaching Madinatul Munawwara and that, and, and that day was Friday. Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through revelation performed his first Juma in that area of Banu Salim. The first Khutbah and the first Juma was performed in that area where the people of Banu Salim were living. And we have some of the old photos of uh, the Masjid. Uh, the, the very old photo, picture of Masjid Yaquba. And this is after uh, Malik Fahad's contribution to the Masjid. They have, mashallah. Pure original shape ko kya kar diya Katam kar diya so those who have not been and who have not seen, they basically are just seeing something else. But it, it was built on that platform, in that area. Here Masjid Al-Quba. And Masjid Al-Jumu'ah. This is Masjid Al-Jumu'ah. And now they have built a new Masjid on this place. Masjid al-Jumma, this is where the people of Banu uh, Salim were living. Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed his first Juma. And this is the house of Hazrat Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala. Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will continue with uh, Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's journey to Madinatul Munawwara in the, in the next session where Hazrat Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala and, and whose house is used for Huzur alayhi salatu was salam to rest in and all the events that had taken place after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the tawfiq to make amal on what has been said wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen durushit allah Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana muhammadin nabiyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sallim taslima la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna mina zalimin Allahumma inna rasaluka al-affa wa al-afiyat fi dunya wa al-akhira Allahumma inna nas'aluka min rizaaka wa al-jannah wa na'udhu bika min gadabika wa al-nar wa na'udhu bika min gadabika wa al-nar wa na'udhu bika min gadabika wa al-nar اللهم إنا نسلك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة يا حي يا كيوم برحمتك نستغيث سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين